So here's a cold, hard truth. There are a lot of men out there using women. There are a lot of you who have been used by a man. And again, let's make clear, that's not all men, all right? There's plenty of good, serious, uh, well-intentioned men out there. However, there are men who are looking to take advantage and get what they can out of a woman. And I want you to always be aware of what you need to look at because I've seen so many women get caught up in these situations. And though I firmly believe it's not that the woman doesn't see the red flags, but she struggles with embracing it or acknowledging it fully for what it is because her desire to hold on to this man and make this relationship work kind of causes her to rationalize past her intuition. Now, notice I said her desire to hold on to this man. Here's a quick thing I want to mention before we get into these signs. And I say this with love. Sometimes you're using him too. All right. And what I mean by that is this. There are a lot of you who may have dated a man who you weren't really into. You, you may have been open to the possibility that things could eventually change. But as you stand, you knew you weren't feeling them like that. However, you may have wanted companionship. You may have wanted someone that helps you with your bills. You, you may have wanted uh, sexual engagement. Whatever the case may be. I'm not judging you, the men right now, nobody. I'm just explaining what it is. And so what I want to say is this. I'm not here to say that anyone should be taking that approach. But I can, we can acknowledge or recognize that this happens. And if two adults, men and women, have decided that they want to deal with each other in honesty and transparency, and they're saying, listen, we, we may not see a future together, we're not serious about each other, but we enjoy each other's company and this is what we want out of this situation, and y'all come to that agreement, that, that, that's what two adults do. That's your choice, all right? But know what you're signing up for. Be honest about why you're still there. And with that said, understand that not all quote-unquote using is done with this malicious intent to hurt the other. I know that sounds like I'm trying to give like sympathy to the user, but I'm not. I, I just want everyone to understand that as human beings, it is very easy to get caught up in a situation and want to hold on to the certain benefits we are receiving from this person, even though we may not be fully confident that we want to be with this person or this is the person we can share our life with, all right? And it happens on both sides. And so if it has happened to you, do not internalize it in a way that you now dwell in it, but learn how to recognize these issues so that you don't get caught up and you can pull yourself out when you know this isn't best for you or this is not what you want in your life. So with that disclaimer now given, all right, let's, let's move on to some of these signs uh, of things that the man will do when he's using you. And the first one is he only treats you nice when he wants something. So this was very important for me to have on this list because let me break it down like this. I've had so many sessions with, with women and with men, but let's talk about women right now. Uh, who are struggling to let go of a relationship. And one of the many reasons why they struggle to let go, even though they're not happy and they may know deep inside this is not the man for them, is they point to, well, we have good times. Well, we have good moments, okay? And one thing about human nature is when we really like someone, we have a tendency to want to hold on to any ammunition we can or validation to feed our desire of remaining here. Plain and simple, we're, we're looking for an excuse, okay? And so what happens is the woman starts to overlook the fact that, yeah, you have good moments, but the consistency in the relationship is negative, all right? He's consistently bad and sometimes good. If anything, it should be flipped. He should be consistently good, but as human beings, we will have our moments of struggle. We will have our moments where we make mistakes. That's normal. And we should be willing to try to work through that when we understand this individual is consistently good. But let's get back to them being consistently bad. So he's consistently bad 
And you think just because he did something nice today, that means something. But, but let's go deeper. When he does even that nice thing, is it followed up by what he's trying to get out of you? So it's like, oh yeah, today he called you. He said all these beautiful things to you. Maybe he took you out. And then the next day, it's like, can I borrow your car? <laughs> uh, can you lend me some money? Uh, I need this favor. It's like, what, what, what's really his motivation? His motivation is manipulation. It's not love. It is not a desire to pour into you. It's a desire to get from you and using these nice gestures to butter you up and soften you up so that he can get what he desires. So you've got to be mindful and aware of is this man only doing good when he wants something? But again, regardless, the main issue is he's consistently bad and sometimes good. Listen, even some of the worst people can give you some good moments. All right. It doesn't change the fact that they're a bad person. It doesn't change the fact or they're bad for you. All right. Or this is an unhealthy, toxic relationship. You got to... Uh, not get lost in the happiness of that moment. And, and here's the other thing that happens. Because you're so starved and, and you're, you're thirsting for that, for, to, to feel love and to feel uh, 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 intimacy with him and all these things, when he finally gives you that moment, it feels so damn good. It's like, you know when you're real hungry and almost anything you eat tastes extra good today? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is this really this good or am I just this hungry? OK, so many times in a relationship, what he even did wasn't that great. You were just that hungry. You were you just been that neglected. You, you've been starving for this attention so bad, whether it be from him or just a man in general. So you look at this little small thing as bigger than what it actually is now. I, I, I have to say, I feel the need to mention, when you're with a man who is consistent, I want you to appreciate all the small things, the big things, all of it. Because again, he's consistent. I just don't want you turning a blind eye to the man who is consistently bad, who throws in some good here and there. So anyways, the, the bottom line point is the man who is trying to use you is using those good moments to manipulate you. He is gonna tend to be consistently bad. He, he, he is, and, and he's only going to do what he's comfortable with, all right? And what he thinks uh, is good enough to get the result he's looking for. But he will not go above and beyond that, all right? But we're gonna get more into that as the video goes along. All right, so let's move things along. The, the, the second sign, Oh, uh, the second thing a man will do when he's using you is that he will constantly prioritize other people over you. So I made a, a point to say people and not things only because I want to leave room for the fact that I am a f believer and supporter of the idea that a man does not or should not prioritize a woman over his purpose and from my perspective, purpose goes hand in hand with God because that purpose came from God. So essentially, he does not prioritize that woman over God. This doesn't mean he neglects the woman. He dismisses her. It doesn't mean he treats her badly. But we have to understand that purpose comes first. All right. And I think that's a good thing that when you're with the right man, it, it, it serves the relationship in a positive way. So outside of that, all right, and, I, and, and also let me, let me take it to a, a lesser level because you have men who may prioritize work and what they're striving to achieve over you. And not to say that that is a healthy approach uh, depending on how they're going about it because they, they, you know, there has to be a level of balance that's found. Balance in the sense of giving you quality time enough to make sure that you feel good um, and are happy in the relationship, but also giving his, his, uh, his, his dreams, his goals enough energy as well. Um, however, I don't want you to assume that just because a man prioritizes his work so highly and his, his, uh, and his dreams so highly that it automatically means he's using you. 
okay? So that's why I wanna throw that in there. So, now let me also say this. It does not mean that some men will use work and, and I got things I got going on as an excuse to neglect you. But notice that that man is using it to neglect your needs versus what I'm saying is the other guy may prioritize his job, but he's still trying to make sure you're good. All right. Two different things. But move on to he consistently prioritizes other people over you. So here's the thing. When men are not, typically, when a man is not serious about a woman, well, he's not trying to put her needs and desires over maybe even his homeboys. He's not going to prioritize her uh, in regards to family. Hell, I've, I've seen tons of situations where the man is giving more priority to his female friends, quote unquote. I, I don't know whether there's other stuff going on. Sometimes it's generally not stuff happening at that moment, but regardless, we can argue whether that there's something brewing there. But the point is, I've seen situations where, yes, they have prioritized not just a female friend, but the female friends in general over the woman. When this is occurring, then yes, there is at least great reason to believe this man is just trying to use this woman. Now, I forgot to mention earlier, when we say use, what I want you to understand is this. I'm speaking of using from the perspective of, I want to gain these benefits from this woman, uh, but I, I don't have serious intentions for her, okay? And that's why I said earlier, if two people have that mindset, but they're being honest and they both agree to it, that's something different. But this is happening under the guise of he's not being transparent. Uh, you, you know, you may be getting mixed signals, whatever the case may be, but he's trying to hold on to you because there's certain benefits, but he is not trying to be serious with you. This is what we're qualifying as using. So going back to prioritizing the friends and other people, Yes, when he does not have that serious interest in the woman and he's just trying to get what he can get from her right now, well then yeah, the other people who've been in his life remain at the top of his list because he sees them in a more permanent way. He's not viewing you as permanent. He's viewing this as a temporary for as long as I can drag this out for, and that sounds horrible, but it is what, it's what happens, all right? But I know at some point this woman's probably going to be gone, all right? If not, I'm, if I'm not consciously saying that to myself, subconsciously, I, you know, the man understands that. So because of that, yes, he does not view the, the, the need to put her higher on the list of priorities. But here's another aspect of it to consider. One of the other reasons why a man may not prioritize you over other people, friends, family, whatever, other women... Is because he may be playing the game of, I'm trying to keep you close enough to gain benefit from you, but I don't want you to feel too special or, or you know, too high up on my, my list of priorities to where now you think I do want something more with you. And I know it sounds crazy. Like, and again, it, it sounds crazy, but it's what's happening in many situations. Not all, I have to stress that, but it happens, it's happened to a lot of people. It's this game of, I, I want to give you hope that there's something here because that's what keeps you holding on, but I don't want to give you too much hope to where now you really think this is going to happen or you're so confident to where now it puts him in a more difficult position or you may start requiring more out of him than he's willing to give. At the end of the day, it's all jacked up. It's all messed up. But the point is, you want to pay attention to that because it is it typically when a man is very serious about a woman, she becomes high on his list of priorities. Plain and simple. At least when we're talking about compared to other friends and families. You know, we've seen guys who 
now they're, if anything, you can say neglecting their homeboys because they want to be with their girl. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, now they're cutting off certain friends or not engaging as much with those female friends. They might be cool with them, but it's like, no, I got a girlfriend now and I want to be with her. This is what naturally happens when the man is more invested and serious. But when he's using you, it's the opposite. All right. So we got another one, of course. Let's keep this moving. And the next one on the list of signs or things a man will do if he's using you is he never or rarely pays. Now, you know, I, I'm always bringing up the money issue <laughs> because I think it's so uh, prevalent. I think it's a real thing that you have to be mindful of. And I don't get tired of breaking this down. All right. Um, and I've seen it plenty of times where you have men dating women and willingly and intentionally placing higher financial burden on her. All right. So that's why I said either never pays or rarely pays. All right. The reason why this is such a sign of using you is because, again, when a man is really into a woman, there is a natural inclination to want to impress. There is a natural inclination to want to provide. And Men know, like you see it on the internet all the time, men, men even complaining about how important money is to women. So despite how much they complain, the fact remains that when they come across a woman that they're really into, they're going to be more cautious at the very least of playing the, uh, playing the game of making you pay or, or showing themselves not able to at least be stable financially in trying to get you because they know how much that can work against them. All right. So even the broke dude will try to act like he's not broke. <laughs> okay. So for the man to not even care, he's not even trying. He's just saying, nah, you got it. You take care of it. You're good. Now, this is very different than you. I'm going to use the word overstepping, all right, and initiating, well, I'll take care of it. No, I got it. I got it. That's on you. I I'm not saying it's okay for him to sit back and just let you continuously do it, but I also can't call him out to just flat out be a user or a bad person because, yes, some people, if he is financially struggling and he wanted to try to make it work, but then you jump in and you're like, no, nah, I got it, I got it, I got it it's very easy for some people to get comfortable with that and start just accepting it, all right? Especially when you're insisting. The unfortunate problem is not only do they get comfortable in those moments, but then it starts to become the natural uh, dynamic of the relationship where now the assumption is you will get it. So please understand, if you do not want to be in that situation where it's always on you, be careful with how much you overextend yourself to provide for him financially. You still have to hold him at least to the standard of being able to take care of himself. All right. It's one thing for a woman to say, well, I don't mind at least taking care of my half. I'm not sitting here saying that's the way it should be. I'm saying if that's how you want to live your life. All right. So be it. Right. But when it starts to become you are taking care of him, I think that's a huge problem. In most cases, there's exceptions to every rule, but in most cases, that's a huge problem. But going back to him never or rarely paying, yeah, you got to understand the mindset of the man who does that and what message that is typically conveying, okay? And it usually means... He's just using you and he's going to get what he can. And if you're going to keep giving, he's going to keep taking. So be very mindful and aware of that. Now, before I go on to the next point, let me add a little bit more to this whole money issue. Because my videographer mentioned to me how he's experienced in his life where, you know, a woman may start to become uncomfortable with the man paying all the time. So now she wants to, again, overextend herself. And I think, again, as a woman, you have to ask yourself, why am I making such an effort to pay now? Because for a lot of men, they don't mind paying. What they don't want is you taking advantage of their willingness to pay. 
What they don't want you is what they don't want is you running them dry. What they don't want you want is you being inconsiderate of their financial situation. Outside of that, if they they care about you, they don't mind providing and taking care of stuff. So when you interject and now you want to be the payer, what is driving you right now? Is it, oh, well, I don't want to come off as weak? Is it, well, I was taught not to rely on a man? Is it that I don't want him to think he has any kind of power over me? Understand that I Though it's, though it's reasonable or understandable why many of you have those types of mindsets, they typically, not even typically, they are unhealthy because they're usually coming from a very negative source. Like when women who have been taught don't rely upon a man, it is based off the idea that the man will use you, abuse you, do all these negative things. It is not based off the idea of he wants to just love you. And you, you know, or just being wise about, you know, it doesn't mean you don't need to protect yourself by creating some kind of financial stability for yourself, depending on the woman and what the life you want to live. And there's multiple ways of doing that, even with a man who pays that doesn't require you to overextend yourself. But again, you, you just have to understand, is fear motivating you or is love motivating you? Because I feel the need to say this, what a lot of men who are willing to pay, I'll say this, this is gonna sound, this may sound bad, but I'm just gonna say it. What he would love more than you offering to pay that check is to give him some, you know what, <laughs> right? Okay, and, and to do it the way that he liked. That would make him way happier than you paying the check. Now, caveat, that's if you guys are already engaging in that way. I'm not telling y'all to go out there and use that as payment or anything. I'm just saying, if you're trying to show appreciation and show him that you care about him, well, the way he receives that is you pouring into the needs and desires that he has, not you trying to match things like paying for stuff if he's a man who's okay with it, especially a man who's in a position where he can easily handle it. it, it it's like, yeah, it's cool. It's nice that you want to pay, but if you're, if you're doing that and you're still not pouring into the other needs, it's not going to, it's not going to mean as much as you think it will. All right. But again, I want to repeat, I'm not saying use <laughs> sexual favors as like equal payment. I'm just saying that will put a bigger smile on his face. But anyways, I digress. Let's keep moving to the next point. All right, so before we get to the next one, um, quick mention, and this is a perfect segue into our next point, but get, get your copy of He's Lying Sis. Plain and simple. Best-selling book. Women are loving it everywhere. Gaining so much clarity from it. Trust me, you're going to enjoy it. And it's not just some book bashing men. It is giving you more insight and understanding so you can avoid the nonsense and you can create healthier and happier relationships. So go to he'slyingsis.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. Get your copy today. You're going to love it. So now with that said, the next sign, the next thing a man will do if he's using you, and this is a chapter in the He's Lying Sis book, is he will act like your boyfriend, but he doesn't, or he doesn't want to make you his girlfriend. He will act like your boyfriend, but doesn't want to make you his girlfriend. So Here's the thing, it's a very common occurrence that confuses a lot of women where you have men who are saying, I don't want a relationship, um, I don't want anything serious, yet their behavior comes across like a man who cares and, and is like a boyfriend. It's, it's, it's like he's in a relationship with you, all right? And it's, it's so confusing because, you know, in this world, we're always told actions speak louder than words. And in this case, his actions are saying, I, I want to be with you or I'm with you. But his words are saying, nah. And so that creates so much conflict within the woman. But this is why I tell y'all actions and words have to line up together. They have to be consistent with each other. That is the true epitome of Truth. That, that's what's going to give you the ultimate clarity. So really, we, we don't need to be just relying on one. They should both be there. With that said, you have these situations where women find that confusing, but 
they don't, you, you may not understand that even though he does not want serious commitment with you, he still enjoys the intimacy. He still enjoys the boyfriend, girlfriend dynamic. Now you may say, well, if he enjoys that, why not just be boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Well, here's the key. Being boyfriend and girlfriend means being committed to you. Being boyfriend and girlfriend means being obligated to you, all right? Being boyfriend and girlfriend means being held to a higher standard in how he shows up for you. But being the man who just plays this role without official commitment, it gives him freedom to do as he pleases. So if today he wants to act like a boyfriend, but tomorrow he's gone and doing his own thing somewhere else, he gets to say, if you take issue, I'm not your man. You see? So it's, it, it's, this, it's this, I don't want to say game, but you can call it that for some. It's this game that some men will play where, again, it goes back to wanting to enjoy the benefits of you and wanting to enjoy that level of intimacy right? But not wanting the commitment, the obligation, and the requirements that come with it. So you have to be careful with letting just those actions confuse you. This is where, you know, one thing for sure, a man who is trying to be with you seriously is not going to come out his mouth and say, I don't want a relationship. He's not going to come out his mouth and say, I, I don't know if I want, you know, anything serious in my life. He, he's, he's less likely to say things like, let's go with the flow. I'm going to say less likely because I do think there's some people out there who default to that because they're trying to figure things out and they may be open to something serious. But, you know, I'm not a fan of the whole let's go with the flow uh, statement. But bottom line is a man who's trying to take it to the next level with you doesn't risk losing you by saying those things. So when a man says stuff like that, he, he, he's willing to like risk this because again, he's not really seriously invested. He just would like to enjoy you for as long as he possibly can. And sometimes it's kind of this, this mentality of, well, I don't have anyone else right now. So let me keep her around you know, while I'm still looking for someone else. And again, I know that sounds really messed up, but this is what happens. This is what happens. And I feel the need to say, before you look at men as just the devil, there's women who do this too, all right? And it's not to excuse either side, it's just to say, listen, people are doing stuff like this. That's the reality. And that's why it's up to you, because we can sit here and say, well, people shouldn't be like that, and you should tell these men, don't do this. Listen, it doesn't matter how many men I say, this is not the way to go about things. There are going to be men out there who will do these things. And the best way for you as a woman to protect yourself from falling into this is to become aware of what to look for, getting in tune with your intuition, uh, being honest with yourself, you know, loving yourself, being healed. These things will help guard you from the nonsense because waiting for other people to do right by you could put you in the position that you're waiting forever. All right. And will lead you to more and worse things. So embrace the power you have to avoid situations like this. All right. So here's, a, here's one more. And lately I've been having a longer list that I can't get all the way through. All right. So I'm going to probably have to do a part two to this at some point. But I th this one I had to mention before we end this video. Okay. And just stay with me here. Another thing that a man who's using you will do is take no interest in your sexual satisfaction. Now, let's talk about this. One, of course, this is assuming you have crossed this line or plan to cross this line with this man. As always, I am not telling you that you should be crossing that line. All right. I'm just acknowledging that many adults will have. All right. And we got to have discussions about this dynamic. So with that said, let me throw out there real quick that I, I do think 
There's a very huge disconnect between men and women and the understanding of how to truly please each other sexually and how they need to pour into each other, all right? So I am not speaking to the ignorance of the man. I'm not speaking to him lacking an understanding of what you specifically need. I'm speaking about the man who doesn't give a damn what it is. You could give him the blueprint and he would not care. If anything, he will come, uh, come with every excuse in the book. Why? Well, you don't need that. or I'm not doing this. And he is much more of a selfish lover. Now, here's something I can say confidently. When a man is really into you, when he's serious about a relationship with you, he at least has some level of consideration for wanting you to be satisfied in the bedroom. Now, here's something else I have to throw out there. Sometimes the lack of him taking more initiative and making sure you're satisfied is due to you lying to him about being satisfied. So be very careful because if you engage with him sexually and you lead him to believe, as I like to say, he's king dingling in the bedroom when it's not really going down like that, you are setting you both up for failure because you have men who think, oh yeah, she's good. She's happy. And if he thinks you're good and you're satisfied, he doesn't see the need to go any further in trying to understand what more he could do for you. He thinks he's already on top of his game. And yes, sometimes some of you have led that man to believe that. So you've got to be open and transparent. Now, I understand it's, it's very difficult to criticize a man sexually. Um, I do think that if we want healthier and happier relationships, especially marriages, We've got to learn how to establish the ability to constructively criticize each other as early as possible in a relationship. We've got to get comfortable with telling each other, hey, let's, let's do this better. Let's do more of this. Of course, criticizing in a more positive tone, not just lashing out. This is bad. This is sucks. I don't know, whatever. But just really with the desire to make things better for each other. Okay. But regardless, You've got to be willing to be open about that. And, and here's the thing. It's you being open about that and, ex of course, expressing yourself in a positive, loving manner that will at least give you some insight to how, how considerate he is of how you're feeling. All right? So it's almost like, and I don't know why this is coming to mind, but let's just say you're sexually engaging with a man who gets way too rough for your liking. OK, if you just try to suck it up, no pun intended, if you just try to suck it up and act like it's all good because you feel like, well, he likes it. So I don't want to, like, throw anything off for him. And I understand you're just like, I, I want to give you some points for trying to, like, again, work with him. But at the same time, this is your chance to say, hey, you know, I, I don't like it that rough. Let, let's soften it up. And at that point, if he shows no willingness to change his style, to accommodate your concerns, then there's nothing for me to believe. Either this man is using you and all he views you, is, views you as is a sexual outlet uh, and, and a person he gains whatever benefits from, or he is not mature enough and healthy enough to be in a relationship right now. So even if we want to take the idea that he's using you off the table, all right, because there may be stories, I've seen some stories of people who will say that you know, this man loved this woman, but he is just really, he doesn't get it when it comes to the bedroom and what she needs. And because he doesn't understand why this would be important to her, he doesn't embrace it. But I still think in most cases, his flat out dismissal of your feelings whether it be sex or, or, or other things, is a sign that he's not serious and therefore he's just trying to get what he can get out of you, all right? Because it boils down to basically, you know, when a man is using you, he's doing the least to get the most, 
All right. He wants to put the less, least amount of effort he has to put for himself or that he's comfortable with putting, but he will require much out of you. So he wants you to be in tune and respective, uh, respecting his sexual desires and feelings, but he doesn't do the same for you. That says that there's a problem there. That says using. That says not serious. That says this is not a man you should be dealing with. So, yes, if you're crossing those lines, be mindful of it. Be more open, be more transparent, all right? Because we have to cultivate uh, a healthy relationship in all the aspects of relate in all the aspects that go into the relationship to make sure this is going to be good in the long run. Thank you for watching this video. I hope and pray you found it helpful. Check out this one over here on the five types of men you need to avoid dating. So my goal here is to help you understand and recognize those men as quickly as possible so that you will know not to deal with them, that you will understand you should avoid dating these guys.